Hey, what's going on guys? It's Mark back in the workshop on Mark's Aquatics. Right, I thought I'd give you a little update on the little sepia tetra because I put all the eggs from in the bag where they spawned in the bag in here. You can see one there right by the sponge filter and between the heater and the filter. Just going onto the filter now or by it. Now there's loads of them in here. They're all over the place. Now there's a mixture of diamond tetras and them in here, okay? You can see a couple of them there zipping about in the background. And every day they're getting stronger and stronger. But they're quite a secretive little fish tetras. Most species of tetras are very secretive. Where you'll find other fish like Danios and different fish like that, okay? They're going to be up in the middle of the water like the rainbow fish fry as well. And they're going to be really active swimming around on the surface. These guys tend to like hug in the bottom under the leaves little one there on the bottom on the right hand side and they're very slow to react to prey and they just wait for the prey to come to them I'm gonna try I can see one right there and I'm gonna try and get the best close-up I can for you there he is you can see his little tummy there is you see the way they just wait for the food you can see a little infusoria there bang there you go see that's what they do they wait for the prey to come to them okay now, if you're breeding neons and you've followed the, uh, the videos that I've done and you look inside your tank and it's gone 24 hours, 36 hours, you're thinking, oh no, nothing's happened. Be very, very patient because most of the time you're going to find a lot of these guys are hiding under the leaves, hiding under the spawning mops, out of light. Keep the light nice and dim in your tanks as well, guys, okay? These little chaps, there's another one there. These little chaps really... Um, they really like to be quiet. Now you look at that, you can even see that tiny little swim bladder in that fish there, look. That little tiny glistening little bubble there. And that's the, oh there's another one right in front, look at that, they've got two there now. It's just below the silicone seal there, that's better. Now there's two of them. Now you can see the micro worms on the, on the bottom there. And I put them in because these guys grow quite quickly to be honest. And they'll be through that infusoria within a few days. They'll still feed on it, but they'll be big enough to take the micro worms. Okay, those water worms. Be interesting to see how close I can get to one of these little guys. There you go, that's not bad. Look at that. A brand spanking new either a diamond tetra or a sepia tetra. It's one of those ones, either ones that was born in the bag or the ones that you saw spawn in the tank. Because what I did is I just put the I put all the eggs from the bag and I squirted them with my turkey baster straight into here. Look at that. Absolutely minute. Let's see if I can find some more for you. Alright, there you go guys. There's a couple more hiding just under that leaf. They're so hard, they're so small. There you go. But there is quite a few in there. But like I said, just keep your eyes peeled because they are and they will. Literally, there's another couple here. They will be everywhere. Not the micro worm there. They'll go under these leaves. They'll be in amongst the spawning mops. Oh, there you go. And as always, you do get the odd ones that don't make it. And I don't think that one there has, has done that. So when you get things like that, guys, okay, the best thing to do is like I'm just going to show you now, squeeze the ball of your turkey baster. Yep, just squeeze the ball of your turkey baster before you put it under. Find out where the little guy is that hasn't made it. And then just suck him up like that, okay? And remove him from the tank. And sadly, these things do happen. I'm not sure if that's another one there. It could be, I think I'll go in there and I'll take that one out as well, just to make sure. And anything you see like that, okay guys, just take it out carefully and then you're not going to pollute your water up. I mean, they're super small, I mean, it's not going to create any ammonia or anything, to be honest. And the micro life in there will probably eat it in no time at all. Another one down there. But you can see how small they are. Just, I mean, it's nothing, nothing mad. It's um, 
they are super tiny but it's it's so nice to watch them if you've got a, a decent camera and you can look underneath the leaves and and you can watch that the micro worms and that tiny little micro life and you can watch them how they carefully just work their way around they'll see something creep up on it and then a sudden pounce forward and they'll grab hold of it and take it down and ingest it and have it for their lunch bang see little one like that they just they're like chameleons they they're very very slowly moving towards the prey and then they get it and that reason is they're not moving too much and they grow quick because they're conserving as much energy as they can putting that into growing rather than swimming and that's why they when they're wrigglers you see some species of fish they wriggle like crazy and they're building muscle up but these guys seem, tend to do it the other way around they tend to stay still very inactive and then pounce on prey and they tend to grow quite quick but in the wild if you think about it they'd be in amongst all the plant life the leaf litter in the bottom of the of the amazon river the orinoco places like this and they would be predated on by everything in there so the the less they move the better for them that they're going to be seen and taken out by a predatory fish or insect there's a lot of insects that eat fish fry in the world and when you're this small everything wants to get you fantastic look at that Well, there you go guys if I move back from the tank and you look in there you think well there's nothing in there and it's um, you've got that little white dot a couple of little white dots at the back that's all you see but I can guarantee you there's a lot of them in there under those leaves now what I tend to do okay when it gets to this stage I'll remove that spawning moth okay I'll carefully go in there with the tweezers keep your hands out making sure everything's sterilized of course boiling water and um, just take it out very very slowly wave it backwards and forwards like this so anything that's in amongst those little fronds will get released and that's going to give it a better circulation of water because that's going to be dead spots in there okay and, and that's where you're going to get any build up is going to get blown behind that spawning mop and now everything's hatched you can take it out dry it out completely dry it and that will kill anything that's on it okay bugs wise and then you can reboil it for next time so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to remove that out the way and then I'll get back to you, okay? Right, okay guys, that is the squid removed, okay, as I call them. The old squid, I'll tell you what, if you put a big hook in that, you'd catch marlin with that, I swear it. Or sailfish, they are, there's my old fishing days coming back. Go away, you're supposed to be looking after them now, Mark. Right, I have taken them all out, squashed them out, like I said, make sure they dry. Everything's going to be hiding under the leaves again now. Hiding out of the way. And they see already you can see the flow from that filter. If I stand back a bit, you'll start to see. Keep your eye on the debris and you'll see that slow. You want a slow circular movement in there, okay? To try and angle your I've got it very, very low at the moment, but I'm gonna probably slide it that way, twist the head that way a bit more, okay? So it gives that slow slow movement in the water, okay? Keeps a good filtration in there. You can give it a partial water change now as well make sure I use rainwater still when they're this size and I'll make sure I just warm it up you can boil some if you like let it go cold put a heater in the bucket bring it up to the same temperature as the water 26 degrees and then very very slowly add it to the tank okay because any cold water going into a fry tank and you'll you'll just shock them straight away and you'll literally see them just falling like snow to the bottom they'll, they'll just die instantly okay they'll shock and you don't want that because it's going to be upsetting after all your hard work of getting the fry to this stage. I'll let this settle and then we'll see how many we got. Right guys, what I've done is I've taken out the spawning mops, I've taken out the leaves and they're going to stay out now. I've just decided that with these guys because you can see them now. You can see there's a lot in there if you look around the bottom of the tank. Now the reason for doing this is you can keep your eye on them a little bit more. Obviously the mortality rate and everything else the leaves don't need to be in there anymore to soften the water the water's already been softened now they've spawned so what you can do now if you just look in the back of the tank it's going to be a little bit out of focus but you can see there's a lot of fry in the back there there's going to be a lot behind that filter and under there as well and they're going to be all over the place now you'll see them zipping about but the good thing is they've got somewhere to hide they're going to go behind the filter behind the heater so they've still got that 
little place of refuge if they feel spooked they can go behind there or in between the ribs of the filter okay but all this mulm and stuff you see on the bottom here okay which is like algae and different things which is broken down the leaves that have broken down leave that in there don't be tempted to suck that out because you'll you'll suck the babies out in a millisecond they'll be up the tube and gone and um, it's beneficial to leave it in there because basically it's just decaying leaves the micro life is going to be feeding on that the bacterial bloom sorry that that's creating is going to feed those fry as well keep the light dim I've got the light quite bright at the moment just so you guys can see it but this is one of those little lights that was in the giveaway if you want to know where to get these go on this the Senzil website and you can order them from there they're only they're not very expensive but as you can see you can keep them right down low and uh, that's when you're going to tend to see more of them moving when that light is a lot dimmer now, I know you can see me with my shark t-shirt on in the background but they're going to get used to you now coming in and out and feeding them and believe it or not it's not going to take them long before they all start coming up to the surface and starting to feed on there now we've got a mixture of diamond and sepias in there tetras okay obviously we can't I don't know what's what at the moment because they're all very very small and um, I'll try and get you another little close-up shot of some but they are minute yes guys leave all that leaf decaying matter in there because that's it that's going to be a source of food as well and somewhere for them to hide and feel safer and we should get quite a few if you look back in that back corner now you can see there's quite a little congregation there now and I don't know if you remember the breeding video that I did on the neon tetras a while back now some months back now that we only thought there was a few in there but we had about 70 out I think in the end 60 or 70 I think I counted in the end when they grew up so we had a good little lot from that very very small which seemed like a very small uh, spawn that time. Right, okay guys, what I've done is I've just put a few of these little fry inside my plastic jug there, see? And I've put a stronger light over the top, bunged in a load of infusoria, you can see it all flying around in there. Now I'm going to try and get you some close-up pictures of these guys feeding. There you go, that's a little bit clearer for you. Now you can see all the, uh, the micro life in the water there, that little infusoria infestation that's going on. And you can see that little guy twitching away and there's one of his mates there there's another one I'll put about six in I think just to show you a little bit closer under some stronger lighting but they're already zipping around scoffing these little things like crazy and sepia tetras tend to uh, put weight on quite quick you see he's tucking into one there look and I've literally just put them in the jar and they're, um, they've already settled in and they're already starting to feed. They're little feeding monsters when they're this size. They just want to get bigger. And little belly on that one, he's um, a little mate next to him there. Like I said, you can see the difference between those two. I think one of those is a, a sepia tetra and I think the other one may be a diamond tetra. But they're all very, very similar when they're, when they're young like this. super small little world in there who else is around another one there he's trying to get through the bottom he can't work out what's going on but I'm not going to keep him stressed out in here for too long obviously these lights are a bit bright but as you can still they're, they're, they're still foraging away still feeding and there's plenty for them to eat anyway I'm going to put these guys back into their main tank now I can come away there and you can see the you see them all in the main aquarium all in the back all in amongst that leaf detritus like I said earlier guys leave that in there you can take your um you can take the leaves out and the spawning mop out it'll give you a better circulation it'll see if there's any that have dropped you know dropped dead in there and you can you can turkey baste and get get those out and keep that tank as clean as you can you can see that little guy there going to town on a few. Hello big eyes. <laughs> Gorgeous little things, aren't they? Little tadpoles.
brilliant stuff. So there you go, there's your update on the sepia tetras and on the diamond tetras. Anyway guys, keep breeding fish. Stop getting them taken from the wild, stop breeding your own, it's great fun, get your kids into it. And as always, you're all stars, love you loads, take care, and I'll see you on the next edition of Mark's Aquatics. Bye for now. Just me and my guitar.